okay friends now let us talk about uh, different type of bacteria this is called the mycoplasma now we are going to focus on actually uh, the physical properties of mycoplasma as well as some of the their biochemical natures and uh, and, a, and a little bit about their uh, pathog pathogenicity property okay now uh, as we know mycoplasma we can find them in various uh, forms like mycoplasma pneumoniae mycoplasma hominis and uh, different types so these two types are pretty common among all those different mycoplasmas now what are the general characters of mycoplasma is that they are, they are the smallest free living bacteria that we can find in this planet earth now there may be a uh, more smaller than mycoplasma in earth uh, we can we still uh, are unable to discover them but still we know uh, mycoplasma is uh, the smallest living bacteria that is known to us and that we can find in planet okay now they, they they easily passes through the bacterial filters and they do not have cell wall so what they are having they are having a strong cell membrane component they are not having any cell wall and uh, and they are very very small but still there are remarkable differences uh, of this mycoplasma with uh, with the viruses okay so if you look at the dna or rna material of mycoplasma they are a lot different from uh, that of viruses uh, rna of viruses and dna of viruses and another important thing about them is that they require uh, cholesterol for their growth purposes okay now uh, this uh, mycoplasma uh, normally grows on soil as well as in sewage so they have the habitat inside the soil and sewage systems okay now they can also be found in uh, in plant roots and plant uh, positions uh, they are they are having the relationship of commensalism with animals and plants okay uh, now let's talk about the morphology of them now as we can see they are devoid of cell walls so normally they do not have a rigid kind of structure they do not have a very a stable structure or un unit or unified structure uh, they are having a structure which is called amorphous so they can be different types they, they are they are having the structure of pleomorphic so they sometimes are granular sometimes they are filamentous so so as we can see in the in, in the in our later pictures then you can find uh, they can have the uh, granular forms we can also have them in spherical forms and uh, we can also have them in filamentous forms okay now if you look at this picture as you can find here there are the spherical forms and here are the uh, here are some of the those granular forms as you can see it just looks like granules inside a eukaryotic cell and you can also find them filamentous now if you look at uh, this picture which has been taken by the scanning electron microscopy we can find uh, the presence of this mycoplasma in a filamentous structure by linking one uh, with another now uh, how can we culture them they are facultative anaerobes uh, so uh, so we need to grow them in the anaerobic conditions and they are having the optimum temperature of 35 to 37 degrees celsius for their growth and they are they require sterol for their growth as we have talked before they require sterol as well as the presence of uh, some fatty acid materials for their growth purposes normally we cannot grow them in medium so there are no media there there we can uh, supposed to grow this them so we need need to give fatty acid as well as cholesterol inside the serum for their growth purposes okay and and uh, what we de give, what we give them we give them the enriched media made by seria, serum and yeast extract so this kind of broth are being called the PPLO broth so this is a type of broth where the, these mycoplasmas are being grown now there are uh, antibiotics which inhibit the mycoplasma uh, like uh, there are no, no there there won't be any penicillin and ampicillin action onto the mycoplasma. Uh, generally, we cannot have any action of this because of mycoplasma. We, do, we generally do not have any cell wall. Penicillin will not act on mycoplasma. Now, if we look at the colony after the growth, generally the uh, for for this colony to grow on 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 the media or PPLO media, we need to set them 48 to 72 hours of incubation at 37 degrees Celsius temperature. Then after some days, what you find this biphasic uh, colony, as you can see in this picture. The colony just is having the uh, fried egg appearance, as we can see in this picture. Now the central regions of all these fried egg appearance col apparent col colonies are opaque, and uh, the area extending into the depth and uh, medium and periphery is flat and translucent so whenever we are going towards the periphery they, they are flat more much more flat and they are translucent and the medium they are having the depth 
Uh, okay, so this is the characteristic structure of schematic presentation. Now, if you see at the middle, there are central zone which is slightly embedded onto the agar, onto the PPLO agar, and the periphery are uh, most flat and they are just getting translucent at the peripheral regions. Okay. Now, uh, some other characteristics like uh, that they are not uh, mm, very good at holding the gram stain as they are lacking those cell wall components. So, we cannot distinguish them by st staining them via the gram stain procedure. We need to stain them by Giemsa. Okay. And they also exhibit motility, uh, exhibit uh, gliding motility. Okay. So they generally do not have any flagella or fimbri, but still they can show the gliding motility with the presence of. Uh, some some cilia or some places or some small ex 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 extension of cell membrane okay so they can motile using those things and the, the motility is called the gliding that means they can s uh, slide from one place to another place laterally okay and uh, and what we can find that microplasma are killed by heat that uh, uh, above five, 56 degrees Celsius temperature for almost 30 minutes so they they can be easily killed because they do not have the cell wall so the, the rigidity for their cell is l is less okay they are resistant to penicillin and cephalosporins as I have talked before but they are sensitive to tetracycline and erythromycin so whenever we need to treat the infections caused by mycoplasma we cannot use penicillin or beta lactamin drugs rather we need to use tetracycline or erythromycin drugs okay now let's talk about the pathogenesis normally the most important mm, disease that uh, this mycoplasma causes is pneumonia and this pneumonia is also self-limiting uh, for this purpose and it recovers in all in two two weeks almost okay and transmission through droplets uh, of uh, nasosecretion can cause this kind of diseases or can transmit it from one person to another person okay so normally uh, uh, right uh, uh, after two weeks when the disease left but still the symptoms of the disease left but still the presence of mycoplasma can easily be seen in the sputum okay now if we go for that what are uh, the very dangerous forces of mycoplasma to cause diseases or driving forces for uh, mycoplasma to cause diseases one of them is to have uh, those uh, gliding mortality it can mm, go from one place to another place pretty easily now the second thing is that they produces hydrogen, perox hi hi hydrogen peroxide as well as a superoxide which both of them are harmful for normal cell and that's why using uh, them uh, using uh, hydrogen peroxide as well as superoxide uh, they can Im they can uh, divest uh, they they can produce uh, some toxic environment for for normal cells so they can infect our tissues by using these materials okay now and also this uh, this n this mycoplasma pneumonia cause uh, act as a super antigen as we know this super antigen can activate macrophages and it can stimulate the cytokine production in huge amount and that it can produce a more and more lymphocyte activation that's how more and more immune cells inside our body st it start activating that will that will suddenly uh, uh, creates uh, that will suddenly make our uh, body weak and weaker and this over expression of uh, immunogenesis is immu immunity uh, caused by this my uh, pneumonia mycoplasma pneumonia uh, is very very much devastating for us okay now what they uh, does in this case they j what they do in this case is that they colonize in respiratory tract and then what they do is that the normal clearance mechanisms are there using those hydrogen peroxide and superoxide they, they kill those cells and finally reach the tissue uh, lining and uh, just start to grow inside uh, or onto the tissue and feed on the tissue and result in the contamination of respiratory tract and the development of a dry cup which is the characteristic symptom of this mycoplasmal pneumonia okay so these are some examples now this picture can show us uh, how this pneumonia uh, uh, when the pneumonia happens how uh, the x-ray diagram looks like so uh, this is the x-ray diagram of a normal uh, chest uh, of a person and the same person which is having this pneumonia you can see uh, th th how this uh, if it, that this pneumonia is actually affecting the whole uh, respiratory tract along with the f along with our lungs okay so this the pneumonia is actually called the walking pneumonia uh, okay actually uh, and the symptoms are the onset of fever malaise and the sore throat okay so so these are some of the examples that have been so shown how we can diagnose all these things but 
Again, the importance of uh, this uh, mycoplasma is that this mycoplasma can cause diseases on us. Now we can treat them using different drugs like tetracycline and erythromycin. We cannot use those beta-lactam drugs. Now it's a challenge for us to develop some of the new techniques to ho to take a hold on the growth of mycoplasma and uh, to stop uh, or prevent the mycoplasma infection. So this is about uh, the properties of mycoplasma and I hope that's going to help you. Thank you.